know every. <laughs> <laughs> the explosion. <laughs> no exploding monkeys. I'm sorry. And Shelly said we don't want to overuse the monkey either. Yeah, right? you have to <laughs> save it for just the right <laughs> special. <laughs> Yeah, is it monkey really worthy? That's the question. The, yes. the monkey is very <laughs> special, so it can only come out when it's a special time. I'm here with Steve, Joe, and Zach. One of the one of the great things about doing these live every week is we think on Monday we know what we're going to do, and then by Wednesday, it all gets tossed yeah. aside, and we decide we're going to do other things. So one of the things we wanted to show you today, we're going to have to hold off until next week, but we will have Zach on to talk about QA. Yep. Say hello, Zach. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy to have me on cam. Um, yeah, uh, we were just going to be reaching out to you guys again, letting you guys know you guys have been doing an awesome job helping out with some of the QA efforts that we've had. A lot of you guys have been posting bugs or uh, pointing out some of the issues in the build every week, and we really appreciate that. Um, Being on IRC and telling us what's going yeah, on there. It, it's been I incredibly valuable to have you guys give us the feedback through all the channels that you guys have been providing us these bug reports and everything through. So I definitely appreciate all that stuff. Um, and we're going to need them even more yes. at the end of this week where we're, we're going to do a big hub test. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and break my hubs, and I'm sure we will. We're so going to shatter them. We're going to break them I'm apart. I'm sure. One, one yeah. thing that I've always remembered Steve saying is no matter how, many, how often we test, no matter how long we test, no matter how many people we have testing, we never find all the things that the people out in the wi yeah. wild can and find. And well, even I think the difference, yeah, it's... We know that, and right now, of course, the community is, I mean, certainly massively bigger than, than our test team. <laughs> yeah, our, our <laughs> That's not true. There, but, there are um, other tests. But, but you know, <laughs> when you ship a game. We're, yeah, we're borrowing a few. We when when a few you ship right. a game, um, in the first few hours of that game being played, people yep. will touch it more than the entirety of time that the development team and QA team working on that game ever touched mm -hmm. it. So that's why, I mean, that's why you always, no matter how polished a game is, um, uh, the public will always find bugs just because they, they immediately in hours have tested it more than we ever could. So, um, and plus you, you know, everybody has their own style. They're, they're trying all these different things mm -hmm. that, um, that you have to have, you know, thousands of different people with different ideas of how to play um, experimenting and, and, and finding these kinds of issues. And so it's Absolutely. really great. That's one of the great things about this project is that during the development process, we can be getting this feedback and getting this, uh, this this public QA, and, uh, and I think Zach was going to talk a little bit more about what we need and how we can get people even more involved in yeah, that. Yeah, um, I've been talking to a few of you guys on IRC. You guys have been super helpful there. Um, some of the stuff that you guys can keep doing is keep providing me with reports through there. Um, if you don't catch me on IRC or I haven't responded, please feel free to make a post in the QA uh, discussion forum that we have up. Um, that's really helpful there. We do review that pretty regularly. I haven't forgot about you, J.O., as well, because we are looking at your bug uh, right now. Um, but yeah, please feel free to post. Um, I'm waiting for a video from Chumbo. Apparently, you uh, you said that you can launch yourself across face. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Oh, um, just not. like the good old days. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh it's just a redeemer bug. You know, no big deal. And shoot it across the map. Oh, that was so. Story. Yeah, it's been super helpful. Um, today, I'm actually going to be trying to do a, a small hub test today to try and break something. So I'm going to be reaching out to you guys on IRC. So if any of you guys are around and have the latest build. Um, I'm going to be throwing up a server, and we're going to be just throwing people at it. I'm going to spin up a bunch of games, and you know, you guys can have fun in the games, but we're just going to kind of be watching stuff on the back end for the hub, and then hopefully that can tell us some great information. And then you're going to give me this big bug list that I have to go and fix. Yeah, I mean, so you'll, you'll yell stuff. at me, and then it'll be a good time. It's so good when stuff. somebody reports a bug, what, what happens on your side? What do you do? Um, we instantly go and investigate it. We try and see if we can reproduce it locally or see, w see if there are any other variables that are you know, maybe in play. Um, after we do that, we follow a report. Normally, you're going to have that report um, also displayed back to you. We like to follow it on the uh, external JIRA that we have, and we'll put a link in the actual forum, and you should be able to instantly see the progress of the bug. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Evidently, I'm too serious. <laughs> Why so <laughs> serious? <laughs> Yeah. I'm is, actually is, is very there a link on today. the forum to the Jira where they can? They can mm -hmm. see yep, the I can. I'll, I'll try and throw one in the chat here in just a second. There is a there is a link on the forums though, and they can check that out at all times. It normally has current status of where we're going with what current bug reports we have mm -hmm. up there. We haven't opened it up entirely to the public yet. That's something that we hope to do well off in the future. You know, allow forum people to be able to sign in, create accounts, set up their own dashboard, and also submit bugs directly into it. That's when the trouble really oh. begins. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's pie in the sky. Yes. A few, that's a few months yeah. off from now. So. Awesome. Yeah. 
So keep on testing, keep on trying. So you said you're going to sp set up a server here that people can come play on? Exactly, yeah. Uh -oh. they'll, they'll be able to come play. Um, I'm not sure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that this is our community play test or anything like that. We are definitely trying to uh, load test the hub a little bit. Uh, yeah, and yeah get it's more get like a community, there. let's beat up on the hub and see if we can break it. And so, so the server here, though, this is, it's actually, is it in it's London? That uh, Raxi was Europe saying it was in London. Pete said it might be in Belgium. We, we're, we it's believe somewhere it's somewhere around here. Somewhere well, between London and Belgium. I thought low, low ping so I could go in and yeah. get yeah. No, that's no. the no. other well, server that I put up and invite people to. Yeah. Playing with Raxi is Yeah, no, that, that'll be <laughs> later in the week. No, this is really just, we, we want to start benchmarking how much performance the hub's taking right mm -hmm. now and, and yeah. where we need to go with it and what we need to look at. And also instances, like we would just want to understand how much load we've got a box yeah. set up that is basically, uh, we think a, a potential spec for a box that we would be running official servers on and we want to understand uh, the performance of the hub mm -hmm. and instances along with it and figure out uh, what kind of, you know, what issues we have uh, what we can scale to per box, like how many how many servers we'll need in the future, and, and so forth. So um, it'd be really helpful to get as many people on here as possible. Um, certainly, and we'll make a forum post when yeah. it goes yeah. up. Yeah, there'll be an yeah. easy way Invite to your tell. Friends. And it's going to be over the course of this week too. I mean, it's yeah. not just going to be today for a couple you know minutes. W we need to be looking at these numbers a couple times over the course of this week so that we can try and get our metrics down so that we have a much better ballpark at where yep. we're at. Yeah. And then we can actually do that community play test that I keep mentioning every yeah. week that we haven't yes. gotten a chance to do yet. I feel bad about that. I don't <laughs> want them to beat up on me again. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to break do. the hub spirit. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of did a nice little segue there talking about the hub. Are we, are well we done talking about QA? Is there anything else you need to? Um, yeah, other than just hang out on IRC today if you guys want to try and help me out with some of that load testing. The, yes. the only other thing I would say about QA, and I think it's important, is if you if you guys submit a bug or you notice a problem and you post about it, just because we don't fix it right away doesn't mean we're not tracking it. Oh, absolutely. We don't know. We, he tracks everything that you guys post. Yep. But like, for example, we had one with profile savings and it was just low priority. We couldn't get to it. And I, I know some people were getting kind of frustrated about it. We'll get to it as soon as we can. We're a small team and we'll get to them with the priorities, but we've got a lot going on. Yeah, th with that bug, for instance, it was it was low priority because everything else you were still able to do yeah. and there was a workaround, right? Yeah. Like, if, if, if there wasn't a workaround, then it probably would have been lifted in priority, but yeah. yeah. So bear with us. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, I, I go through the same frustration because there's something that really bothers me when I play every day. You, you know which one I'm talking about. I should have got credit for that kill. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's not important right now. So <laughs> I, I, I totally understand the frustration about not yeah. getting something fixed. So segue into hubs. Well, speaking of hubs, so speaking of hubs. things that haven't been fixed. <laughs> 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 it's dump on Joe Day, I guess. Okay, so we've uh, the last build had the first build with um, hubs. I think it was the last one where you could create any type of game types in our hubs. Uh, there's a really good forum thread that um, I, f uh, I forget who started. I think LC, the LC started it. And the, um, the thread, he, he basically, he laid out what he thought hubs were, and he was actually pretty spot on to what we were shooting for. Yeah. And so there's a good thread about it in, in the game design forums. But basically what we want to do is we want to create a really easy way for people to, to get together and play and have a community and start games, and that's what hubs are. And while the first you know, test was dual, we've now expanded it to where um, you can start any game type from a hub. And awesome. again, keep in mind, these are all almost tests, right? We're, we're looking to see how things work. Yeah. We don't know what we're going to limit. We don't know what we're o options we're going to offer. We're just playing around and, and seeing what's going to be there at the moment. Um, but that being said, you can now create hubs with any game type, and you can create hubs that automatically start an instance, which is really important. If you were an old admin who had a server, you can now create a hub that automatically starts that server and people can join it and still get the community aspect that we're looking for and we're trying to build around this. And there'll be more features coming on like, you know, hub-based leaderboards and that sort of thing. So uh, that's coming along pretty well. And um, this is what it looks like. Can you switch Shelley, over? Shelly, could you bring that up? Thank All right, so this is, this is the, uh, the hub interface right here and as you can see it's pretty plain right now but you can f fully go through if you want to come over here we can say I want to do a team deathmatch game you can pick your maps oh, I see we have a lot of maps on there that you guys haven't seen yet um, but you can pick your map and it'll go you set up all your settings and you can launch it straight from here people can join eventually you're gonna have the ability to preset your teams right here in the hub 
So if you've got a clan match going on, it's a CTF game, you can get all the people into the hub, and then the guy who's running can go, nope, you're on red, you're on blue, you're on red, you're on blue, you're on blue. That sort of thing. You can kick people. I mean, I, I can't kick myself, obviously, but you can kick and ban people from your hub. So you, as the host, you have well, pretty much full can. control. Maybe try that. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, I have, and I wasn't going there. Thanks, Steve. But um, so th this will be a really quick interface, and then there's chat that goes on with it. So you'll be able to chat to people, and you can send. Once the instances are up, you actually are able to chat backwards to it. And there's a whole lot of really cool things planned down the line. For example, we're, we're talking about, uh, I would like it, let's say you're in a CTF match, and you're playing somebody, and you two are squaring off, and you want to go duel. So I want you to be able, right from the CTF match, Say, I want to duel the two of you. You drop right back into a hub match lobby. You set it up. You go duel. And as you're fighting in that match, your scores are being broadcast back to the main CTF match, the dedicated instance. Yeah. So everybody who was in there can see what's going on in the duel. And if they want, they can drop out and spectate and create this really cool, seamless, awesome. you know, transitional atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we also see hubs as something that, you know, clans might have a hub. Um, There'll be, you'll have ladders and stats associated with the hub, so you'll know, like, you know, who the best teams are that, you know, kind of, that they hang out on this hub. You'll have matches in progress where you, I mean, yes, you already have that, right, but we'll, we'll make sure that we'll, we're prioritizing the, the best matches from the point of view of, of rankings, whether they're official ladder matches mm -hmm. or whatever. So we have tons of ideas about where we can explore, and what we're trying to do now is just get the, the basic hub functionality um, solid so that we can start experimenting with this, getting feedback from you guys, and figuring out how we can make this hub experience really rich and an important part of how the you know we build community. Yeah, well, I mean, I, th there's a whole thread about it. is this going to replace the server browser and everything? And it, the very short term, it won't. But I'd really like it to, and I think it has a much better chance of bringing the whole concept of you know pick your own where you want to play up into the yeah. 21st century, where right. yeah, I it, mean, it, it really encourages community. And and it's and when we say replacing the server browser, I mean don't think of it as you, you've lost anything. I mean, still, if you basically just want to run one server, just think of this as the hub is the lobby you go into before you start your match, mm -hmm. and you get to choose your, your game mode and everything like that, just like we you know, previously had map vote and things like that. And then you launch, you, you know, just one instance that's connected to that lobby, and you launch it when you're ready. And so you really still can have exactly the same experience as, as single servers. It's just a more polished version of that experience. So will you be able to have like admins who are able to work, uh, run your hub and do things in your hub, or, or is it going to be that everybody can just go in and, and change a game if they want? There, there uh, eventually will be all sorts of yeah. uh, features in there, um, permissions, that sort yeah. of thing. There'll be control that where, as it is right now, the admin of the server can set up and say, I only want to allow duels on my hub, or mm -hmm. only, I only want to allow CTF. And eventually we'll, we'll come up with a good set of restrictions and options in there. But yeah, I'd like to see the ability to say, okay, I have a hub and I have four admins who are in there, and sometimes they hang out in the channel, and sometimes they're in the games, and they can control everything. They can control the dedicated instance. They can control what instances can be popped up and that sort of thing. And then way in the near future, we want to have smartphone apps that allow you to see who's in the hub and external apps that allow you to talk to your hub and see what's going on and see where your friends are going. I mean, there's a whole Oh, so I can, like, ban Chumbo from, from my phone. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> 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 so uh, after, after the 15th oh gosh, shock hit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, uh, Cafe did have a question in the chat. Will, uh, sure. will hubs eventually work across multiple physical servers? I, I think, so I, th we've seen that point brought up before. I, we understand, I, we, I agree that's a need. I guess we need to figure out what the right way of doing that, whether, like one of, the, one of the ways to support this kind of idea of having a community that's not, that doesn't want to all play on the same physical hub because of ping issues is that we might allow cross hub chat or something like that in mm -hmm. the future, right? Where we, we want to solve the problem of we, we want your community, we want to make sure that you can connect to the community you want to have and the hub is one way of doing that, but we don't want to limit that to just people that want to play on, uh, you know, on East Coast US servers or European servers. So we'll yeah. figure out how to support that, that hubs can feel connected with each other. L look at it as sort of the hub is the micro level and we can always expand above that, right? Yeah. We can always take hubs and group them into a new structure yeah. and have a chat interface that goes on. The, the tricky part to doing what um, a couple of people suggested in the forums is, okay, I connect to a hub, I know that my ping to the servers in that hub yes. is X. Right, but if that hub can connect to servers, you know, on the West Coast, in Europe, on the East Coast, now we need this infrastructure inside the hub 
that allows you to ping instances. And that's what we're trying to get away yes. from. Yep. But now that doesn't say that we can't go bigger and say, okay, so uh, we, we have a collection of hubs that yep. are, you know, like clan bases, hubs, where if you join that, you can chat to anybody in any of the clan base hubs. But still, I'm on the clan base East Coast hub where when I start matches, people yeah. from the East Coast hub sees them, where people on the West yeah. Coast hubs do not. But at the same time, a, a somebody on a West Coast hub could say, hey, come play with us, yeah. and you could yeah. accept their invitation and seamlessly go from the East Coast hub to the West Coast lot to the lobby on the West Coast hub of that game. So we definitely want to make it so yeah. that people, that you can have all those kinds of experiences. I mean, the, that's the key that we're trying to figure out is how can we make our, our the interactions on how you find matches um, more community driven and and more I mean one of the things like one of the big um, to me one of the big ideas with the hub system is automated matchmaking is kind of a soulless thing that <laughs> where you have to guess what players you know trade-offs are about how long do you want to play for the perfect match and is it really important you have this level or this mutator or whatever that we want people to be able to to make their own decisions about what matches they play and also interact with the people they're playing with and you know kind of you know, make it m a more social experience so that you're, you know who, y who you have fun with and you can kind of build relationships with people you're playing with. Um, at the same time, one of the other things that we're doing and, you know, and we'll also continue to explore is we're going to have a quick match option mm -hmm. that um, drops you very quickly. So if you just want to, if you don't want to, <laughs> if you're antisocial and don't like the idea of having to chat with other people and set up matches, then you can easily drop into a death match or CTF map right. match. Um, we'll have, um, that will have, um, one of the things we're also working on, I guess Joe might touch on, is we're adding, um, so we've had some experimental um, um, ELO uh, ratings, and we're going to start displaying those mm -hmm. uh, for people in hubs so that you know when you're m making a match uh, what skill levels the other players that um, you're, you're joining are. And our quick match will also take advantage of that. So if you're a low-skill player, you quick match, you'll quick match into a game that has other low-skill players and similarly um, with high school players. Yeah, in fact, that you can, um, as an admin, you can say that my hub doesn't allow people above a certain level to join it, and they'll not be allowed to join your hub from yeah. the server browser. You, once you're in a hub, you can actually say that I only want people who are at my skill level or below, and it gives yes, a little, it'll give a little yeah. leeway in there, but you'll be able to limit it to that. So we're doing a lot with that, and then as you said, we're going to be displaying your rank on you know the scoreboard in the hub in the server browser just about anywhere where it was really useful to to see where mm -hmm. somebody is and I, I think um and to go back to the the whole topic of why i like hubs i play you know when, when I, I play ut I, I typically hang out in two or three servers maybe right. three or four and i got to know everybody who played on those servers all the time but there was really it's such a hassle to go to the IRC to chat or to go somewhere else. This gives us a nice place where we can sit and chat and we have a community, we have our own ladders, we have our own everything. So I look at it almost from the, uh, like a dart league in a pub or yeah. a dart league in a bar, right? Where you go and you hang out, but yeah, you still play darts. And that's, that's what I look at the hubs yeah. are. So I think it means a lot to a lot of different people, yeah. but the key is we have to get, and I, I know a lot of people want us to go really big, really fast, but we need to get the core. Yeah. And once we get the core going, it's really easy to expand the core. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a lot harder to bring the core back in. So we're starting off small. We're starting off, you know, limited options, limited game types, yeah. uh, limited control, and then we'll start building on it. And hopefully the community will help us build on it. We have some really talented server admins out there. We have some really talented programmers out there who can help us build things. Like we have the idea of the uh, instance commander that's scheduled for way on down the line that allows you to, you know, load balance effectively. So there's a lot of things that we can do with this down the line. But so let's segue into the the new main menus. Hopefully you've all seen them now and hopefully you don't hate them. Um, I'm pretty <laughs> happy. They're, they're still undergoing some some changes, um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the route we're going. Uh, Anybody else want to comment? <laughs> 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 I'm talking here's a lot. Our, here's our menu. Yay. Yeah. So yeah, this I this is yeah definitely in progress. Mm -hmm. um, we saw a lot of good feedback on usability issues um, in the forums from last week, and we'll be trying to address some of those things quickly. Certainly, the I guess the customization menus, the settings menus, are still 
pretty uh probably don't want to click on them and show yeah them. um <laughs> again bear with me <laughs> aren't, aren't there yet believe but, it or um, not updating menus and changing the look is actually a kind of time consuming thing so as i'm building mm -hmm. it and yeah. and changing stuff around all of these are going to be changed to meet the, you know the new look and feel yeah. they just haven't gotten there yet um but it, it's coming along pretty well also our new our new hub browser which is also a server browser I, it's not hooked up because we're inside the network here, so you can't really see much. But yep. this has all this gotten awesome. a new look and feel. Uh, you didn't see it, but the hub menus all have a new look and feel. The mid in-game menu that everybody's used to, that ugly blue menu, has been completely redone to now match these menus, and yeah. those will all be in the next build. So it's come along pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty That's happy great. with it. Yeah. And it's easy now to, to go in and, and make a custom game. And well, one of the things that we really wanted to do, and Steve and I talked a lot about this, and we were trying to figure out, because you know, early on there was that whole, everybody wants you Windows, you Windows, you Windows. Now, I, I, <laughs> I, it's no secret, I'm not a huge fan of you Me? Windows. I actually <laughs> think that you Windows is very painful to get into <laughs> games. So we tried to oh, figure out, <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> so we, we tried to figure out what, what really makes, what w people really wanted from you yeah. Windows. And what I think we came up with is, you know, you want to be able to, these, these sort of static screens like creating a game or the server browser, things that you, you really want to be focused on, but at the same time you want to be able to pop over, you know, and go in and do your control settings, right? So they pop up over top of each other a lot like how you Windows used to work, but in a much easier, faster, quicker sort yeah. of way. It's not six clicks to get into a game now. Right. So you, only two. you always understand the state you're in. Like, I'm still... Yeah. In the hub browser, I'm still in the create game menu, but I popped over and wanted to check, you know, tweak my player settings or control settings. But when I when I hit OK, I'm right back there. There's no confusing. Well, did I do I back out to cancel or did yeah. I did I cancel or save that? It's so um, that's what how we think <laughs> that that addresses the the tr true advantages mm -hmm. of what you Windows were giving us. If there's other things that the uh, that you think uh, we should also be considering, then that's something to come talk to us on the UI forums about uh, mm -hmm. what you think the, the value that the, that you Windows brought and how we should um, implement that. I did get a message on Facebook the other day. Somebody said, I love the, the menus. It's like, fa it's like uh, you Windows only better. Yes. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> just, somebody just asked what training, training. is. Um, to, to give you a quick, this is going to be a quick tutorial that teaches new people how to get into UT and how yeah. to play. It's basically instant action with an actual interactive tutorial yeah. that we're working on. Yeah, we're really but again, excited about these. these Which we were supposed to be showing today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, these buttons these up buttons. here don't get to, I mean, yeah. we're, we're changing them around as we figure out exactly what the flow we want. Um, and, and so that'll all be changing over the yeah. next couple of days. But the general form where you have, you know, the menu's always up at the top. Everybody wanted the big close button. Well, the big close button's back, right? So it's all there. And it's all in one place, and that's what we were really trying to do by unifying the menus. And I, I but think the they close button well. doesn't match. <laughs> I <laughs> had to do that. You know, I <laughs> it does match. It's just it's red, so you know it's bad to click on because you don't ever want to close UT. Do you want to quit? Do you really, really want to quit? That, that's right. I'm going to bring up like multi the spam dialogue, so you have like 20 of them. Are you sure you want to quit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so if you guys have any comments or uh, you want to talk about this at all, you can hit us up on IRC or there's, there's a, uh, is there a thread about menus? Oh, there's a lot of threads about <laughs> menus. <laughs> um, just you, you can just create a thread, talk about it. I mean, however you want to do it. Yep. Hit us up in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yep. so let's jump over to Steve who is going to first talk about what's going on with the rocket okay. launcher. <laughs> um, so yeah, the rocket launcher we're experimenting with um, the alt fire mode, not very popular by on some people's, uh, <laughs> uh, of making it. Uh, We're both going to um, get shunned over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think I'm still <laughs> in the middle. I, mean, <laughs> I, I still feel that the rocket launcher <laughs> is something we need to try, and I, I like yeah. trying to play with it. Definitely. I didn't personally think anything was wrong with rockets beforehand, yeah. but I'm all up for trying new things, and I think that most of my aggravation with it comes from the fact that I'm used to yeah. the rocket launcher so performing another way. And I think that's a really good point, is that we are, when we try something out new like this, even we're not necessarily 100% sure that it's going to work out. Yeah. Uh, we have different people on the team have different opinions on how it's working out. Um, but we generally put something in and leave it for long enough that people have, like for example, so right now, um, actually in the next build, I'll probably have reduced the delay between rockets. And that's one of the nice things about this is that we have a couple more ways we can tweak mm -hmm. the balance of the alt fire. Um, that we didn't have before, and it also simplifies. I also like that it simplifies interfaces. That now, and with alt fire, you're just basically s selecting between rockets and grenades, and you have control over your spread. But 
you know, one of the things I'm interested in seeing is as people get more uh, used to this and as we refine the exact, you know, timing between rockets, whether or not it actually, people learn how to take advantage of the fact that now you have complete control over where you put your three rockets. And so if you're really skillful about it, it may be a very effective way of, you know, of, of handling the fact that there's three different things that this guy could do at this point. If he dodges, he, so I basically put a rocket where he's going to dodge to, where he's going now. I mean, uh, you know, that's one of the things we want to see is we want to get the community feedback after you've played with it for long enough to really know. And, and you know, it's quite possible that, that it does, it's not, um, I'm sure it's not the right balance instead of trade-offs right now, yeah. but um, we'll be making tweaks to it over time slowly and getting feedback as, the, as everyone gets more used to it. Um, and that's actually, what exactly. we got to re-emphasize that point. First impressions on a big change like this are never right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, you Almost always they're negative. Almost passionate. always oh like, oh my God, why did you change this? <laughs> and the answer is, remember, we can always change it back. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't try new things, how do you ever innovate and move forward with yep. a game? Yeah. So, you know, may maybe this isn't the right change. Maybe it is. There's a lot of good reasons for it. There's a lot of sketchy reasons for it, <laughs> but um, you got to try it, yeah. and I'm all for trying it and giving it time. But trying it is not trying it and then reverting it a week later. Trying it is trying it over the course of several weeks to get a feel for Give it. Because it again, I mean, I still to this day when I'm playing in playtests, and we playtest every day. When I'm playing in playtests, I launch grenades three quarters of the time when I want to launch rockets, and it's just because I'm used to it. Doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's what yeah. I'm used to. Oh, it means it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts about uh, s with the the helmet change with the rocket change as well, or the helmet change is also something we're experimenting with. There's it, there's some things that I think it it does nicely. There's definitely some issues now. I don't like um, in some cases the fact that I mean in some cases it's nice that you can't headshot a newly spawned player. In other cases, it, like. I feel like, so right now, in fact, one of the things I was kind of thinking, toying around with is the idea of reverting that change uh, just for CTF right now, because, and this is still, yeah, th this is just also to kind of get feedback from the community, but the thing is with CTF is that you can have more cases where a newly spawned player doesn't interact, like the idea here is that we want to keep pe people from being headshot when they're newly spawned and haven't had a chance to really establish themselves back in the flow of the of the match, but that by the time once you've been shot once or twice, your helmet's gone and, and it's back to normal. And so, you know, that in, in match game types like Free For All and Duel, it's a good balancing thing of helping the newly spawned player survive a little longer, but doesn't really affect the feel of the balance of weapons that much. Um, in game type like CTF, where you're, you know, likely to be at midfield with still with the helmet. Yeah, or, I mean, in the other base. I mean, with a yeah, translocator, it's with you're a translo in, yeah. you're across, yeah. nobody's hitting yeah. you. Yeah, so that's, that's a case. And... Uh, I mean, reverting in CTF doesn't mean that we're s saying, oh, we're going to have different values in different game types. We might end up there, but I'm also very reluctant to do that. I'd rather yeah. the game be as consistent in rules across all game types. We'll, we'll, we'll break that. Some um, other way. We'll, 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 we'll find we'll, a way to or balance we, it. We might end up not being completely consistent, but that's certainly not our, yeah. our first option. But uh, I might revert on CTF just to see, to get feedback on how that feels and, and whether that really is where, um, I mean, that's where I think we've seen the most negative feedback from people here. Uh, um, well, if you rule out Stu. <laughs> but wasn't Stu mostly in CTF? Uh, no, we were in deathmatch most uh. of that. We only played one CTF match yeah. that, that particular day. Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, I mean, again, this, this is, again, is an early change. It's been in there for, yeah. what, two weeks now? Yeah. Right, so people are just, we haven't adapted strategies to it yet. I think there are some real ramifications of it by boosting up to, uh, it's, what, 120 yeah. to start with. I mean, that, that nerfs the one-shot rocket yeah. kill which I think is really important. So, I mean, it means that there's going to have to be balance elsewhere. Right. So, obviously, it's not going to be perfectly yeah. balanced yet. I mean, it's it's a fresh change. We're just playing with it. It'll yeah. get there, or we'll get rid of it, or we'll change it to something else. But, you know, it's, I think it's worthwhile to keep trying it and see if yeah. we can make it work, or if we can make elements of it work that yes. we can put somewhere else. Yeah, and it's possible the right thing is that, I mean, not to make it specifically protecting headshots, but be a small amount of armor. Yeah. Um, there was a comment I saw on the thread about why, d why does it have armor? Well, one of the things we want, and we want this to be consistent, is we want people to be able to lose their helmet without ha always, I mean, headshots are totally broken if the first time you headshot somebody, you always are being stopped by helmet. So we have to have another clear game rule for mm -hmm. why you would lose your helmet without having been headshot. So you got shot by you know, a shock beam or splash damage from a rocket, you pretty easily lose your helmet now because it has a little bit of armor that gets taken away. 
Um, the amount of armor the helmet has is certainly something we can tweak. I'm not sure that that's the that's going to solve the fundamental problem that people are saying yeah. now, but that's some certainly something we could play with. But it's certainly another example of something we're experimenting with that is not um, that we have no real position right now on whether it's going to end up in the game. There's lots of other ways we might try to address this issue. We might decide that it's there's nothing that improves over the the you know where we started from, and so we might go back to that. That's uh, it's just something we're experimenting with, and that's going to be part of, of building this game for quite a while. I mean, we're we're certainly not at the point where we're locking down um, features. We're certainly are you know slowly tightening. I mean, you can you know kind of see discern the the direction we're going in general, but everything movement, weapon balance, things like you know the helmet are all still yeah. completely yeah. open, and and things that are going to get a lot more um, experimentation and evolution out of. Yeah, and and it's going to change. I yeah. mean. It, some days, and, and keep in mind, some builds, it's, everybody's going to be like, oh my god, I love it. Then the next build is, oh my god, I don't love it. <laughs> and it's going to be a wave that goes back and forth, and the hopefully, eventually, it sort of settles in to where it needs to be. It's a lot more settled than it was just a few months yeah. ago, actually. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so there's anything else? Yep. Oh, there's a lot more stuff. Oh, we have lots of stuff. Settle in. So notes. you're going to be seeing um, a, a lot of uh, content work um, happening coming in this week. Um, so. Uh, uh, Pete's been working hard. Pete Hayes has been working hard on getting the shock rifle finalized. We've got uh, uh, Bill Cladis doing the mm -hmm. effects. Both those things are still getting um, iterated on, but looking amazing, and uh, we're really excited about the direction that those really are going. He's really excited to help. Uh, help Pete's out. also been working with um, Tidal Blast and Kaozin. I can't say his whole Kaozin handle. Tech AE. Yeah, <laughs> 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 on uh, the uh, Enforcer and Flat Cannon. So those are making progress on uh, coming flat to the build. Flat Cannon looks amazing. And um, we're really excited about that as well. We'll also be getting some new effects for those two weapons to uh, so that the effects um, are more in. Uh, uh, more in line with the the quality of the new weapon models. Uh, we've also got new animation work uh, being done. Uh, one of the things right now you'll see is that the the uh, temp character that we've had for a while, we've now got him set um, using the new setup and new rig, and he wasn't designed for it, so he looks a little funny if you look at him up close. But that's all temporary. Soon, hopefully, we'll somebody says we'll have a some scar on him. <laughs> 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 I love that comment. Yeah. Soon we'll hopefully have a uh, um, some some more final characters that uh, can give you an idea also of, of the mm -hmm. the kind of look we're going for there. Um, let's see. We talked about with the hub. Um, I just want to touch a little bit more on the um, Elo ratings. It's, it's far from polished. This is a very early version. We're expecting that we're going to be doing a lot of tweaking and um, updating on that. What we're doing right now is only doing Elo for deathmatch play, and we basically wait um, dual team deathmatch and free for all. Um, with uh, in kind of descending order of how important th their contribution is to your your ELO. Um, for CTF, we're just using we're still um, for matchmaking. You can look at the person's deathmatch ranking, but we don't we don't trust our our skill rating and scoring of people in CTF enough to use that for determining who you're going to play with yet. That's something yeah. we'll certainly be working towards. Um, another cool thing that uh, we added um, that I think is going to be in this week's build is uh, country flag support. So now you yes, can choose. Yes, yes, yeah. you can choose. Um, Maria we have, was working we, on I think we right? did 20 flags to begin with. Yeah. So if your flag, if your country isn't represented, um, I'm sorry. Uh, feel free to give us a flag, and I will make a post in the forum saying what dimensions we need it, and we'll add it to the atlas. Mm -hmm. um, it's really easy for us to do. Uh, but we we did the first 20, and you guys can do the rest. Um, I would eventually like to get all the flags in there, and then down the line, what we really want to be able to do is have some sort of mechanisms for getting clan flags, and we'll have all of the various uh, UT fictional company flags and that sort of thing in there. But yeah, awesome. I, I like yeah. flags. Yeah, I think it's really cool. And then, um, then I guess I don't think Scotland was done. Yes. <sighs> My goodness. Croatia was though. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> was Croatia? Yeah, I think basically the cutoff was. Um, we, we looked at the top 20 countries in terms of number of players uh, from that country. Yeah. So, and our, yeah, that count is not exactly yeah. perfect, but <laughs> that's, um, but um, so we'll, um, we'd love to get more flags from anybody. Doesn't matter if there's a, you're the only player in your country, and um, although I don't think there's any country, but. Um, yeah, if, I mean, if you, if somebody, <laughs> uh, as I said, I'll post the exact yeah. dimensions. I think they're 32 by 24. Because yeah. they're tiny little things, but if you make a flag and it's either for your country or it's just really cool, um, we'll talk about including it and getting it into the atlas. And if I have to add more atlases, then I'll add more atlases. And 
we'll come up with some really cool yeah. system yeah. for doing it. Henrik yeah. had mentioned secret custom flags for contributors. We will have, we will have, we definitely, definitely plan do something for, for contributors. contributors to have some special recognition yep. that's visible everywhere on hubs and the scoreboard and so forth. We're still figuring that out. It's still a little ways out because we definitely want to do that right. Yeah. Um, it's possible also with flags that eventually we might, you know, let people have other things than just countries mm -hmm. represented there. Maybe, maybe, maybe we let people have, you know, it's one of the premium features have their clan, yeah, um, favorite thing. Or face. maybe, maybe we can <laughs> get some of the like, you know, the um, corporate logos when mm -hmm. we finalize mm -hmm. those as being, um, so you can be Axon or Izanagi or yeah, or, or, and, or whatever. And, and down the line, I mean, yeah. if we. But when we get really big into pro gaming, we could have sponsored flags yep. and that sort of thing. Yep. We'll come up with some yep. really good options. So, and, 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 and I see Hypno going, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, is there anything else? Um, somebody's asking, is this going to be free to play? Is that really still, still something that people wow. ask? Wow, well, it's, it's, you know it's free, free, free right now. You can it's go play free. it. Go yeah, play. it's free. <laughs> go play. It's not free to play. It's free. Go play. And we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> be Actually, working on making it a little that. bit easier <laughs> for people to, to to find it and get it. Yeah, too, so very soon. Yeah. So uh, weapon guys, come on. Um, we're we're gonna have hidden weapons at some point. Just yes. give us time. H hidden weapons is definitely on the list. And if, if it was trivial to do, we would already have done it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's not trivial to do. And no, no Nally War Cow. I'll fight against that. <laughs> no. I don't know. If somebody makes an awesome Nally War cow, <laughs> cow for the marketplace. Oh, <laughs> man. Bring back nightmares. And then we'll make people. <laughs> I just remember seeing him walking across the bridge. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wobbling back and forth. Well, I think what would work better is to actually have somebody on the back of the war, war cow so you still have a normal headshot. Yeah, so you headshot. have a normal headshot. <laughs> yeah. That's so you have a Nally not, in the back. Not the cam. Oh, the Nally. That would be great. <laughs> That actually be pretty amusing because he could have his, <laughs> his bottom two arms. Yeah, bottom two are holding on. The top two is holding <laughs> yeah. the gun. I think that would work. For <laughs> hey, somebody out there, we yes. want this. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and back to contribute. Yeah, we that's we a have million dollar idea that. right there. I know so that that would do well <laughs> in the marketplace. I, like I would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I guess that's all we have for this week. Yeah. Yep. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank thanks you. Thanks everyone. Thanks, um, make sure you check out the Unreal Engine stream tomorrow. I think they're talking about. By four points out. I don't know. What Some really cool about. stuff. Some it's really awesome amazing. cool stuff, and, yes. and Champs yeah. will be here leading the way. So, yeah. all right, guys, we'll see you next week. Have see a good one. Later. Talk to you soon. Bye.